In this tutorial, we are going to get um, our instructions to flash up at the start of the game. And then we can either press enter or we can use a timer to then get them to sort of um, be removed after a certain point in time. So what I've done is I've just written some instructions for my game in Word. And this will just mean that they're spell checked correctly and I'll be able to copy and paste them in. Now, this is my main game. This is my first level. And you can see I've only got one room in this uh, little test environment. But what we're going to do is I've already got a manager layer. Now, if you haven't got a uh, layer for this, I'm just going to add a new one in and then right click rename and we're going to call it instructions. And what I'm then going to do is you're going to make a new instruction object. So if I go on my objects, right click create and then go to object, let's call this O instructions. Now, if you've got different instructions for each level, you could call this O instructions L1 or O instructions L2 and so forth. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as O instructions. Now, what we're going to do on this one is we're going to add an event and we're going to add a draw event and we're going to use this draw GUI. Now, what this will do is it'll allow us then to add in a few things. So I'm going to go and scroll down on the left hand side, so right hand side here, and we're going to add in a draw value. And we've got this here, which is going to be called instructions. And it's going to be set at zero, zero for now. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add another one in and inside this caption here, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pasting in my words that I've just typed in. Now, we will sort out, there will be a slight issue with this because essentially they will basically be on one line, but I'll show you how to sort that out later. Now, at the moment, you can see it's zero and then zero. Um, so let's put this down a little bit. Let's put this down on the X. Let's just put it down to say uh, 60 for now, just so I can show you it working. Now what I'm gonna do is just go back to my room and we're gonna drag in the instructions onto the instructions layer. So I'm just gonna drag it in. It doesn't really matter where you put it. As you can see, mine's gone over here now at the moment and that's absolutely fine. So if we just play this game now, What you find, look, is the instructions are obviously here on the top. So the problem we've got now at the moment is that the instructions are there, but they're all one line. The other thing as well is obviously they're going to be here permanently. So what we're going to need to do now is move this around a little bit. So let me go back to my instructions here. And what we're going to do is for the instructions, you've got instructions, X and Y. So let's make sure the instructions are going to be relatively sort of central. So I say central, it doesn't have to be central, but if we did want to put this central, we could do something like, um, we could do 600 because each one of my rooms here is 1366. And let's move this down a little bit. Ooh, wrong one. So let's move this down. So if I put this, I've moved that one over. Let's move it down to say uh, 300 just for now. What you find now, look, the instructions is here and you can see the text there is here. Again, it doesn't disappear, but we'll sort that out now in a moment. So the first thing that you'll notice is we have that there. So let's get this on different lines. Now, there's a few ways you can do this. If you notice, because I've typed this up in Word, what I could do is take every sentence and as soon as I have the full stop, I could copy this and paste it into a new draw value. And then I could have multiple draw values. That would work, no problem. Or I can use something called escape characters. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a backslash N. Now, this is uh, what's called an escape character. Now, Game Maker will ignore this backslash N, but it knows backslash N means put it onto a new line. So if I just show you what that's done now, is obviously... You've got the first part there, use WSG to keys to move and then to shoot, aim with the mouse, press the space bar. So that now 
has gone on to a new line. So all we need to do is carry on with these new lines and we can keep on going. And as you can see with this one, we can add another one in. And if we carry on going here, watch for the enemies, let's backslash N. And that is about it. Okay, so let's see now what that looks like here. Okay, so the first thing that we've got here is we have now a nice list of instructions. Now, ideally what we want is to move this over and it's fairly easy to do this now because we set the value there 60. Let's set the value a little bit larger. Let's go up to 100. And you can see this here, the instructions. Let's move this down. So instead of that there, let's go to 40. Now, one of the downsides of this is that it uses a default font. So what we need to do now is improve the font. And um, we will move this a little bit over a little bit more, but I need to make it bigger first. So before I start moving it anymore, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make two fonts. So on the fonts on the side here, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna create, and then go to font and I'm gonna call this font heading. And then I'm gonna make another font straight away. And I'm gonna call this font main. So one's gonna be for my heading, one's gonna be for my main. Now at this point in time, you can see it's um, basically gone for the default font with the default size. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, um, make use of a new font. So I'm just gonna go and look for a large, font here so impact and i'm going to make this quite large this is my head in so let's go for 30 and this one here ariel yeah, it's not bad we'll just make it a little bit bigger and we'll say that's 20 so one should be a little bit bigger than the other now you can always come back to this and make this bigger so if we think it's too small we can always improve it and likewise if we think it's too big you can always come back and open these fonts and change them so if we go back now to our code up here, what we need to do is we need to add in these things here, the set fonts. So I'm gonna put a set font here and set font here. And what this will allow me to do is change the font. So I'm gonna choose font head in here, and then I'm gonna to switch to the other font there. So font head in there and font main. So let's have a look and see what that does. Okay, so straight away, that's nice and large. These could do with coming over a little bit. And in fact, I can probably put another space in between each of these. But for now, that is okay. Let's just move it over. And what we're also gonna do is we're gonna add a background into this. So if I move this over from 100, we'll say 200. And now let's add a background in. Now the font, as you've seen, is white. Now I would like to keep that as white, but we might need to change it later. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a paint bucket in here which sets the draw color. Now notice the order I'm putting this in. I put a draw color, then I'm setting the font, then I got the instructions, then I'm setting the font again. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add in a background color. Now you notice I have an option here to draw a rectangle and you'll see left zero, top zero, right zero, bottom zero. Now zeros the obviously top left side of game maker so what we need to do is this the left side of it is going to be zero the top is going to be zero the right is going to be 1366 and then the bottom is going to be 768 because that is the size of the room and i want to fill it now if i just press play here now what we should see is just a white screen coming up like so now if we change the color, so I'm gonna add in another color up here. So what will happen is the color will be chosen, then it's gonna draw the rectangle, then it's gonna set the color to white, and then the fonts are gonna come in. So let's change this set color. And let's go for say a blue, we'll go for a really darkish tint here. And let's click okay, and let's see what that looks like now. Okay, so your game is still there, but what's happened is the instructions now are obviously overlaid. Now, let's say 
we're happy with this. And we're gonna add in a little timer. So what we can do is we can basically say, right, timer, once five seconds, 10 seconds, however long it's gone, it'll automatically get rid of the instructions. Or what we can do is we can press a button to remove the instructions. So I'm gonna show you how to do it in two different ways. So at the moment, we have our instructions object. If we wanted to just press a certain key to remove the instructions, all I do is add key press, or so add event, go down to key, press, and let's say for argument's sake, uh, we're gonna press the enter key. Then what you'd look then at are these here. So you can see one of them says enter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna destroy the instance. So what this does is it destroys this object. So if we press play here, and then I press enter, you can see it's destroyed and it's a way to go. Now what happens if you want to do it on a timer? Well, if you wanna do it on a timer, we use what's called an alarm. Just before we do that, if you do add in a key press event, you'll need to let your players know a little bit about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add in a, another draw event. And at the bottom here, I'm gonna say, um, please press enter to close. And what I'm gonna do then, I'm gonna position it then directly under. So I'm gonna have it, 200 indented, but because we've got now loads of lines going down, it's not gonna be 300, it's gonna be start now. So I'm gonna put 500 in. Let's have a little look and see what that is looking like. Okay, so there you are, press enter to close. Now, what happens if you want a timer? Well, let's do a timer. So what we're gonna do, is a number of different ways we can do a timer. So we can either use an alarm, or we could just use a step event. So if I do the first part, let's add in an alarm. So what we're gonna do is we are going to create and we are going to then run an alarm. Now the way alarms work is that they essentially work in number of frames. So 60 is one second, 120 is two seconds and so forth. So let's say for argument's sake, we wanted our uh, little caption to display for let's say 10 seconds. So if I put a countdown of 600, that there would give me 600 frames and there's 60 frames a second. So it would give us then 10 seconds. Now, because this is my demo, I'm not gonna leave it 10 seconds. We're gonna do it a little bit quicker than that. So we're gonna, just leave it 180, so that's gonna be three seconds just for this. If we then add an event and then go to alarm, alarm zero, and then what we can do is we can say destroy instance. So let's have a little look and see what that does. And as you've seen, after three seconds, it's then destroyed the instance. Now. You could, if you wanted to, you don't have to use an alarm, uh, but what you could also do is add in a little countdown timer. Now, depending on how you wanted to do this, you could do it in the alarms, or you could do it using a step event, but that is something that you can look at separately with this. So that's how you'd add an instructions page and you can either put it to remove on a timer or you can put it to remove automatically after a few seconds.